Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at Vandegrift High School for what we have been waiting for all season. It is the opening round of the UIL playoffs. Anderson, of course, 5A, going to be in the Region 3 and 4 bracket today. They are taking on Crosstown-ish rival, <laughs> the Connolly Cougars out of Pflugerville. Anderson enters as the winner of District 17. Connolly is the fourth place team in District 18. So you got your bi-district round coming up here in a little while. Just six minutes from the opening tick off. Want to go ahead and take a look at the bracket. Not a lot of games being played yet. The bi-district round started today. Uh, the opponent for Anderson in the next round, if they make it, will either be New Caney or Jordan. That one got started around six, so we should have an idea of who uh, won that game by the time that we are done here. Of course, it's all a matter of whether or not they update the the, the side or not, of course. Uh, right now, the uh, the conventional wisdom from from writers and from broadcasters all around, coaches as well, is that New Caney will likely be the, the winner of that one. So hopefully we see some uh, Anderson going up. It will be on the road, the New Caney Eagles. So that one uh, should be this Friday, and it should be either in Bryan or maybe Brenham. Not too sure yet, but... None of that matters if Anderson can't make it out alive here. This is a Crockett team, or excuse me, looking at the uh, the wrong standings. This is a Connolly team that finished the season 22 and 13. They do have a negative point differential. They scored 809 this year. They gave up 820. Now, if you want to look on the other side of that, Anderson scored 975 and gave up 535. So Anderson's is uh, is over is, is plus 440, and Connolly's is minus. 11. But the Cougars did finish 7-7 seven and seven in a district playoff race that went down to the last week. Hendrickson just missing out on a postseason berth. They were one game off. Hendrickson finished 6-8. and eight. Connolly finished 7-7. Seven and seven. Then there was a little bit of a, uh, a space between those two. Pflugerville finished 11-3. Mainer 12-2. And, and Weiss 12-2. Weiss the winner of that district. Want to go ahead and look at the bracket once again. Looking across to, uh, to some of the teams that Anderson played throughout the season. And it looks like uh, the only game that hasn't been played for these uh, Anderson's district, I guess technically both of these districts as it is the by district round, uh, Northeast versus Pflugerville. That one should actually be a whole lot of fun. I believe that we do have a Pflugerville broadcast for you if you want to go check that one out. That one got started at 7. It's Northeast Pflugerville. And Northeast was really the only team that uh, gave Anderson much of a run for their money. Uh, in the regular season as far as district goes. Although it was nice for them. They had that weird McCallum game to, uh, on the road to wrap up the season. It was a weird environment, very loud. The uh, the officials were perhaps not up to their, their usual standards in that game. So it was good for Anderson to have to, to go on the road and just have a real rock fight of a game. As now we are all neutral sites through the remainder of the season. Very happy to be at a gym like Vandegrift here in the Viper Pit home of the Vandegrift Vipers and home of my boss, Mr. Merle Bertrand, doing all the, uh, <laughs> the Vandegrift games across all sports here on the Vipe Live Network. But we are excited for this one, just three minutes away from getting started. Under three to go before we come in. The gym is starting to fill up. Both, uh, both teams have their student section on this side. We are on the home side of the Anderson Gym, so should be a pretty good crowd for us here. Of course, we've uh, removed some of these restrictions, and I believe that, that Vandegrift is LISD anyway, so they would have a different set of rules to begin with. But no JV game <laughs> before this, of course. The Trojans out, ready to go. Jack Francis, Bennett Blackerby, Mike Wagner, Nate Langley. And Mitchell Whitlow should be the starting lineup for the Trojans. We've got a whole new season ahead of us. Both teams now going to start 0-0. Anderson finished the season. They played 35 games. They won 27 of them. They finished 27-8, 14-0. 14-0 in district play for the second season in a row. Of course, 
Corey Day is coming to an end as Anderson will be moved back up via realignment to 6A. Well, they will be playing a uh, a whole lot of a, a whole lot of a different schedule, we'll say. But Anderson coming in tonight with a good chance to move on to the area round for the third consecutive year. Experts picking the Trojans in this game. This is a Connolly team that's really bounced back from last year. They had a dismal record uh, the season before this. But now they have bounced back, finishing above 500, 22 and 13 overall. 7-7 seven and seven in district play, as we mentioned a moment ago. And this team is still very young. They've got plenty of freshmen and sophomores on the roster. So this is a team that may not necessarily be built for right now. They are gearing up and loading towards the future, but they will be led tonight by a senior, Sam Barnwell, number 24. He's going to be doing the bulk of the scoring for them this year. I believe he averaged about 13 a game on the regular season. But now we head over to the bench. Not sure if we're going to have a PA for the announcements of our starting lineups, but if we don't, I'll get them for you in just a little bit. Imagine the Trojans stick with the starting lineup they've been running with all year as it has been so successful. I am, am interested in seeing how the rotations are going to work for Coach Pittsford as uh, it's a whole different animal once you get into the playoffs. The guys who have been coming off the bench first, uh, sometimes it's been Ben Bazzari, and usually it's a substitution for Langley. Derek Armour's kind of uh, been the one to take over that role as the sort of backup five. But this starting lineup for Anderson is so good, and they've really been taxing teams all season. But now... They've got to keep it running and looking to advance to the area round for the first uh, for the third time in as many seasons. There is your buzzer. Do apologize, I'm not feeling my best, but by the time the game gets going, I'm sure I'll uh, I'll get some adrenaline in me and I'll start having some fun. Both teams all set and ready to go. Both teams bringing in cheerleaders, both teams with a pretty substantial student section. So we're going to go ahead and throw it down to the PA now. When we come back, we will have some Anderson playoff basketball for you. Oh, 
Kendall White. At guard, a six foot senior, number 10, Damian Henry. At guard, a six two junior, number 3, Jonas Mendez. Forward in 6 5, freshman number 22, Makai Wyatt. And get forward in 6 4, senior number 24, Sam Barco. Time to head coach is Warren Muhammad, assisted by Brian Phelps, James Ellis, and Amish Patel. Now let's meet. The Anderson Trojan representing District 17-5A. Yeah. 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 The Trojan winner of the contest will receive the record of 27 wins and eight crosses. Starting for the Trojans tonight will be at guard in 6-1 junior, number one, Mitchell Whitmore. Yeah. 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 At guard in 6 foot junior, number 10, Bennett Blackerby. Guard is six two senior number five, Jack Francis. At guard, a five eleven senior number eleven, Mike Wagner. And at guard, six three senior number twenty four, Nick Henry. And in the head coach, Daniel Pixel, who is assisted by Clark Johnson, Jose Barrio, Michael Dutton, and Robert Lynn. Now it's my turn to talk again. 7.31. As it's a beautiful night for some by district basketball. It's a beautiful night to be a heartbreaker. And hopefully Anderson can do that here tonight. They put their 27-8 and eight record to the test here in the playoffs. It will be the starting five Anderson has rocked with all season. Francis Langley, Whitlow, Blackerby, and Wagner. If you want to go for Connolly, number 22, Makai Bryant is going to be the one to jump at number three, Jonas Mendez, number 24, Sam Barnwell, number 10, Damian Henry, and number zero, Kendall White. So here's Langley. Set to get this thing underway. Pretty good crowd for us here tonight as Anderson going to win the opening tip. So Connolly will start off with the possession arrow. Mike Wagner there on the outside, and we are underway. Here's Francis. Gets it to his big man, Langley. Nate puts it on the floor. Going to try and go inside. Francis loses it through his hands. He was trying to get him into the post, as that's going to be a turnover. Of not a great start for either side, as that's just a, a pass to nobody. So Anderson gave it back, but they'll get it right back. Let's erase those first 21 seconds and start over. The Trojans, nothing, nothing with possession. Here's Bennett Blackerby out on the wing, the three-point sniper. As here's Francis in the post, going to take it in. Now back out for Whitlow. Mitchell puts it on the floor, dumps it off to Francis. Francis, one dribble, misses the layup. Here comes White. Dumps it off to number 10, Damian Henry. Now here's White around on the perimeter. I assume they're going to look for number 24, Barnwell, all night, but Francis out there defending him. Always a good idea to keep the ball out of their best player's hands if you can. Some good work on the perimeter for Anderson. Connolly just forced to work it around. Now here come the Cougars. White gets it in, an open three on the corner. That's going to be no good. Rebound batted away and into the hands of Mike Wagner. Now here come the Trojans looking to break the tie. Nate Langley running the floor. He'll put it on the floor, take it into the lane, back outside for Francis. Jack with it on the wing, Barnwell defending. Screen comes from Langley. Francis into the paint. He's trapped with nowhere to go. Back outside for Nate. So some good defense to start for both squads as Anderson can't find too much inside. But they've had an all right time getting some penetration. But here's Mitchell Whitlow. They're going to get it deep to the big man right there on the low block. Langley going to take it in. Goes right to Barnwell. Hits the roll. Nate Langley opens things up. Anderson has a 2 to nothing lead at Vandegrift High School. And we are officially on the board. Six minutes, 15 seconds remain in the first quarter. Here come, I was going to say the Vipers, here come the Cougars. Both teams with black jerseys. 
So here's Damian Henry. Missed one out on the perimeter a moment ago, but now he's going to try and go with Jack. Jack pokes it away, but Henry's able to clear it. Now here it is on the wing. They get it to Barnwell streaking in. He's going to pull up and knock down the jumper. As oh, we've got ourselves a fan favorite. Here comes Wagner. Screen for Whitlow. Wagner pulls into a triple. That's no good. Rebound is going to go high to White. Whitlow thought he had it. But now here come the Cougars out and running all the way to the cup. Missing the layup. That's basket interference. That's basket interference. Are they going to get a foul on Anderson? They're that was basket interference, but they called the foul on Wagner. A Connolly player tried to put it back in when the ball was still on the cylinder. So here's White to the line. First free throws of the game. Go to the Cougars. That one's going to be good. It rattled around, hit everything. One for two. So a three to two lead for Connolly. Here comes Wagner off the outlet from Francis. And they're just going to slow it down, take it into the half court. Screen from Langley. Wagner driving in. He's been aggressive with the ball. Now here's a three for Blackerby. That missed everything. Rebound hits the floor and goes to Bardwell. Bardwell dumps it off. Now back outside. They get it to him. It's going to go over his head and into the hands of Henry. So some good bounces so far for Connolly to keep their possessions alive. And here comes White. Here's Jonas Mendez. Now back for Barnwell once again. Francis defending. And that's going to be tipped into the backcourt off of Anderson. So we'll stay here, but a good job from Jack to just knock it out and uh, kind of get a reset for the defense. 5-10 remaining. 3-2 is your score. Anderson trails it. Here's White. Now back for Barnwell. He was left open. He'll try a three. That's no good off the back iron. Rebound goes to Jack Francis. Tracks it down long, and now he's coming up the left side of the court. Rejects the screen from Whitlow. Now out with it. Whitlow going to pump fake. And out back onto the perimeter for Wagner. Mike coming around. Now Francis. Jack gets it to his point guard. Jab step and Wagner into the paint. Goes behind the bag with it to Nate Langley all the way to the bucket. And he is going to be fouled. No, they're going to get a, a, a traveling violation going against Langley. So already a uh, tough start on the whistle for the Trojans. They get Langley on the travel and they get the Wagner foul. Halfway through this first quarter, nearly. 4.30 to go. Anderson with just one basket so far. Into the corner. There's Mendez. He'll fire away. That's an air ball. And rebound goes to Henry. He was trying to throw it off an Anderson player. Couldn't do it. But it, another fortuitous bounce for the Cougars. And that's a jumper from Kendall White. So the offensive struggles are being felt here by the Anderson Trojans early in the game. They pass it off to Whitlow. Mitchell driving in, kills his dribble, gets it back to Langley. Nate going to put it on the floor, has it taken away, and another fast break opportunity for the Cougars. Francis trying to time his jump, and he blocks it. Jack Francis with a beautiful defensive play in transition, and he turns it right back over. Now there's Henry firing again. That's another air ball, and here's Bennett Blackerby. Number 10s can't hit anything early. A lot of air balls. But we have a timeout. Will be for the Trojans. Three thirty-seven remain. Going to go ahead and take our first timeout of the broadcast. I'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. You are listening to Anderson Playoff Basketball on Vibe. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Back in it. Anderson ball, they trail it by three. 
Only two points in the first four and a half minutes for the Trojans. Doing a pretty good job of defending, though, only giving up five. As here's Whitlow, got it into Langley deep in the post, and Langley's going to have his second basket of the game. He's got all four of Anderson's points. Here come the Cougars. Here's White for Connolly, now back outside for Jonas Mendez. Mendez stuck outside with it. They get it off to Bryant. Into the corner for White. Black are going to be defending him. Loses the ball as we cross under three minutes to go left in the first quarter. Here's Mendez getting it deep into the paint for Bryant. He's going to go right at Langley. Nate, good job keeping his hands up as Bryant going to flex on Langley. Got to be careful with stuff like that. This here's Wagner. Screen comes from Whitlow back outside for Francis. Blackerby, he'll take this. Bennett Blackerby, first triple of the game for the Trojans. And after missing his first, it's good to see him knock down his second. Here's Barnwell as Anderson has tied the game at seven. He's going to come off the screen firing. That's short. Good box out from Langley as that's going to be knocked out of bounds by Bryant. So seven apiece. Got our first set of the game. Barry Entos is going to come in for White. White leading the, the, the Cougars in scoring with three. Barnwell and Bryant both have two. But now it's 7-7. Seven seven. Anderson with another chance to take the lead right here. Two minutes, 15 seconds remain here in the first quarter. Langley with it up top. Looking for Whitlow in the post, but they'll just get it out to Francis. Screen comes for Langley, trying to get a smaller man on him. Jack goes behind the back. Back out onto the wing, well cut off by Bryant. Here's Wagner with Barnwell on him. Get it into Whitlow. Still out on the perimeter. Pass fake. Get it into Langley in the post. Back out for Wagner. Mike going to take it into the paint all the way, and he's going to be blocked. Wagner was hammered, and we are going to play on. And now in the backcourt, and thrown to nobody, but another good bounce for Connolly as they get it to Henry. Anderson hasn't gotten a whistle this quarter. So we are just 90 seconds left until the start of the second. Now here's Barnwell. No subs in the game so far for either team. Well, excuse me, uh, Barry Entos just came in for Connolly. And there he is right now, number five, Joseph Bakientos. And here's Barnwell. Back into the corner. They get it to Bryant. Bryant going to take it right at Francis. Beautiful spin to get three. And that's the second time he's flexed. And I, I bet if he keeps doing that, they'll tee him up at some point. Makai Bryant, one of those young freshmen, already with four points in the game. As here comes Whitlow to the cup, going right at Bardwell, and the rebound is going to come away to Barrientos and the Cougars. They're out and running, under a minute to play in the quarter. Connolly, two-point lead and the ball. As there's Bryant. Cougars just running out the clock here. Wagner pokes it away, but and that's going to be two on Wagner. The way they've been calling the game, if that's a foul, after Wagner gets hammered on the other end, he's, he's going to get a touch foul against Barrientos. They'll get Bazarian coming in off the bench for the point guard who picks up two fouls in the first quarter. Not quite the start that the Trojans would have hoped for, but Connolly coming out playing very well here in the first quarter. Anderson having a hard time on the offensive end. Switch on Langley. They don't have a lot of places to go with it. Langley going to get the steal, and it's going to be bumped out of bounds, and Henry got away with another foul. Ran through Francis to bump the ball out of the way. And once again, Connolly going to end up with it. This will be the last play of the quarter as Barry is going to get it off to Barnwell. Barnwell coming around, and that's going to be a travel. So two seconds left in the quarter. Anderson will have a shot to try and take the lead after the first quarter. Bazarian going to check out, and Wagner going to check back in for the offense. Who do they try to get it to? You have a chance to catch it. Maybe one pass, a couple dribbles. Either or, I should say. As here's Francis. Going to take it, crosses over. He takes a bump, and that's a foul at the end of the quarter on Barnwell. It should be on Barnwell. Are they going to wave it off? It was before the. It was before the end of the quarter. It has to be. 
Francis did get bumped. If, if you blow the whistle, this should count. Are they blowing it off? So this shouldn't be the end of the quarter. Yes, it isn't. Anderson will have like .1 seconds, but more importantly, they get their first foul call of the game, and it's on Barnwell, the leading scorer on the season for Connolly. So he has Juan Wagner, though, with two. Well, how much are they going to put on the clock here? Point five or something, if that? Yeah, point three, so you have a chance to catch and shoot. I just try to heave it into Blackerby if you can. He'll get Jack out and running. Catch and shoot! No good. Not sure if that would have counted anyway. But Anderson trails it after one. It's 9-3. It was an ugly, ugly first quarter there. But now we are ready for the second. Three field goals to one touchdown. The Trojans need a little bit more offense. Only two players in the scoring column there for the Trojans. It was three for Blackerby, four for Langley. As we'll go ahead and keep it here through the break. Four in the game for Bryant, the freshman. Three in the game for White. Two in the game so far for Barnwell. But now both teams getting ready to come back out onto the floor. Anderson with some foul trouble. As Wagner is on the bench with two. Blackerby and Francis will start the second quarter, but that's the only starters. They've got Colin Page, Fred Dale, and Ben Bazarian. So Colin Page, I assume, is here to cause some havoc. Anderson has a little bit of room to play with some team fouls as they've got four left to give. As if they're holding the whistles, might be able to get a little more physical. As here's Page, and it will be number one Jordan Wright, a sophomore, to bring it in. Now here's a double, and Anderson got a hand on the ball, and that's going to be a jump, so Anderson gets the ball right back. There's that trap, a sophomore guard out on the wing. Not a surprise he could fall vi victim to a trap like that as now here's Whitlow as they're going to get Blackaby out of the game. So Bennett gets his first rest of the contest. Francis the only one who has played the whole time, the first nine minutes of the game here. Jack with the ball now. Screen comes from Whitlow. Hand off to Bazarian. Now fading into the corner, Francis is going to have a look at a three. That's good. Jack Francis' first make of the game. He's got three points. That's the lead back for the Trojans. Now they dump it inside, and that's going to be too hot to handle. Into the post for DeAndre Toy, the pass off the hands of Amir Nahas. So Nahas with the turnover. Francis around the perimeter. Gets it to Page. They try to go right back to it. Is Colin going to barrel to the basket? Lays it up and one! Colin Page! Takes it to the basket, gets the hoop, gets the harm. He'll head to the line for one more. And in the playoffs, a guy like Colin Page is going to be, he's, he's just a real wild card. Because he can get to the basket, he can get a layup. He can play some defense. He misses the free throw there, but no matter. Anderson with its largest lead of the game. It's 12 to 9, seven minutes remain. Very close to a backcourt there. As now with it on the wing is Mendez. Now take it away. Here's Francis. Jack trying to take the bump. He pushes into the front court, dishes it off, and Page can't save it. So Anderson, uh, a little sloppy with the ball. Jack definitely getting away with a little arm bar there, but he was trying to keep the defender on his back. As here's Page just causing that havoc. As he'll try to get it in, and this is a turnover. Colin Page to the cup, and he takes a hard foul. My man, this is what I'm saying all season. This is a player you love to have. Because he's so annoying. You can see how hard that foul was. That was already some frustration. Oh 
makes that. Almost got to the trap. Now here comes the Cougars all the way to the cup, laying it in. A beautiful move to the basket for Jordan Wright. Anderson wasn't quite expecting that. As here comes Francis, he's going to take it coast to coast. Back out for Bazarian. He'll put it on the floor, take it to the baseline. Now he'll get it back to number five. Jack going to pull it back out. Hand off to Page. Page puts it on the floor. Looking for somebody to go with Francis. Instead, he'll just get downhill all the way to the cup. Bumps off the defender. And here is Colin Page. Six points in the first half. No, he didn't even come for six points in the last two minutes. Now into the corner for Nahas. Ooh, luck. Now he didn't travel. He dragged it, but he stayed in. And now here underneath for Whitlow. That's going to be another jump ball. Good job going up to grab the board is Amir Na uh, Nahas. But Anderson able to get a hand on it. And uh, if they were going to have the ball anyway, you might as well get it to him on a jump ball. Now 16 to 11. Darienzo is going to pull up into a mid-range jumper. No good, but a strong board underneath and put home by DeAndre Toy. So back down to a 16-13 lead for Anderson. Barnwell getting ready to check back in. So Anderson, uh, from these minutes, seems to have the bench advantage. Here's Francis. Waves off Dale. Whitlow going to put it on the floor back for Jack. Crosses over. Caught in the air. Now Whitlow going to catch and take a three. That's good, Mitchell Whitlow. So now three Anderson players getting in on the three-point action. Whitlow, Francis, and Blackerby. And Anderson out to a six-point lead. Now here are the Cougars into the lane. Bazarian over there trapping in the corner. Francis traps, and Francis gets the takeaway. Jack puts it on the floor and loses it, and that's going to be a foul going against Connolly. Francis bailed out there a little bit. He shouldn't have put the ball on the floor so soon, but Connolly a little too aggressive trying to get the steal. We have some substitutions. Barnwell checks into the game. <laughs> Who do you think Page is going to shadow? So Bazarian checks out. Langley remains on the bench. Wagner remains on the bench with those two fouls. Imagine they try and go as long as they can without Wagner, try and stay afloat. And right now they're doing a pretty good job of it. But now some more starters back into the game. It's going to be Whitlow, Francis, Page, Dale, and Blackerby. So a little more offense onto the field for the Trojans. Or onto the court, I should say. Now here's Fred Dale. Looking to get it to his running back. Can't find him. He gets Francis instead. Jack's going to not use the screen. Instead he'll use the switch. Now here's Blackerby going to rise. Can't connect. Rebound high. Dale bats it away. And Page rips it out of the hands of Toy. Now here's Blackerby crossing over, getting to the basket, laying it up, kicks it out for Dale. Freddie sets his feet. Air ball into the hands of Francis. We'll call that a pass. Is Jack going to lose that out of bounds? But it will stay here. And get White back into the game. Looked like that might have been off of Francis, but Anderson will take it. So they'll get Whitlow out and put in Campbell Duncan. So here we go, 421 remaining in the quarter. Anderson has a 19 to 13 lead. Blackaby looking for somewhere to go. He gets it into Campbell Duncan. That'll be knocked out of bounds and it will stay here off of the hands of Mackay Bryant. Bryant, the freshman, giving Anderson a lot of trouble there in the first quarter. Here's Blackaby to pass in. Looking for somewhere to get it downhill. Now they'll just have to leak it back out for Page, or Dale, excuse me. Now into the hands of Francis. 4.15 remaining. That crosses over. He gets by Bryant, but a good job by White to come up and get him. They have a Kendall White and a Jordan Wright. Now here's Page around the screen. Loses it going to the basket. And he'll come up the other direction. Here comes Bryant running the floor. Crosses over on Blackerby. Gets the scoop well off there as Francis gets the rebound. Jack takes a bump in the back, and that's going to be a foul going against the Cougars. The fouls that have been going against Connolly 
have been some uh, some discipline related fouls. They haven't made them. Uh, they haven't fouled Anderson players going to the basket for the most part, except for the two on Page. They fouled them far away from the basket. That's the second foul Francis has taken right at round half court. As he gets Bryant, going to take it in, loses it. And now a pass ahead. Should be an easy layup, and it is for Kendall Wright. Excuse me, Kendall White. Francis wanted the foul, couldn't get it, but Blackerby's going to take it up. Francis hiding out there in the corner. Hand off to Page. Thought about the three. Screen comes. Francis going to take a deep one. No good. Jack missed everything on that one. Is the bench unit keeping Anderson afloat here? Is they're winning this quarter. And a pass way deep to Bryant. Bryant going to end up free. Misses the layup. Anderson with a big lucky break. As Bryant wasn't missing those. As Penny Blackerby got him with the, with the behind the back crossover. Beautiful dribble move for big number 10. Well, he's crossing over, working on White. Excuse me, that's right. It's, this is a tough thing to decide. As there's Blackerby, throws it off, and they're going to get him for a travel. Langley getting ready to check in. They'll take out Dale. Now 2.50 to go. Connolly with the ball with a four-point deficit. Anderson hasn't played very well with a lead here in this game. Some sloppiness, some turnovers. Is, and getting into some bad habits with a, with a district that didn't really make them pay for any of their bad habits. That's why a game like that McCallum one is very valuable to this team. As here's Barnwell, kicks to the corner for Henry. Henry going to take a sidestep three. That's good. First make of the game for Henry, who's been struggling to find it all game. It's now just a one-point lead for the Trojans. They've kept the bench lineup in for quite a bit here. As Francis is going to get his first rest, and that's going to be a push-off going against the number zero, Kendall White. So Anderson, only with those two fouls against Wagner. And now that's six fouls against Connolly. Here comes Francis. Rejects the screen from Langley, dishes it off to Nate. Nate going to put it on the floor, back for Jack. He's going to take it into the paint, all the way to the cup, and he's going to be blocked by Barnwell. Francis hits the deck hard, as, ooh, no double dribble called against White, as he's going to take it into the cup. He's going to scoop. He's going to score. Connolly ties the game up. Under two to play here in the quarter. Anderson gone stone cold on offense. Can't stop turning it over. Here's Francis. Now Langley looking for Campbell Duncan. He had position as Campbell loses it out of bounds, and that's off of Campbell. So Anderson, if they could just hold on to the ball, as they're going to get some of the, the, the starting lineup back in the game to try and right the ship. Get some good minutes from Colin Page there. Langley there to take it away. Ball back out. Barnwell got a lucky bounce, and that's going to fall. Now to Jinx. It's here's Langley. As here comes Blackerby. Bennett going to take it in. Pulls up from the elbow. That's no good. Too quick on the release. As here's Langley gets the ball back. That's going to be another jump ball. Good job from Langley to just try and get it back. So it will be Wagner on the inbound. Anderson the drought continues. 118 left in the quarter and the half. So looking for Blackaby. They dish it off to France. No, Whitlow, excuse me. Whitlow is the beneficiary of the Wagner assist. Five points in the game for Mitchell Whitlow. As Jack almost poked it free. Now here's Henry. They skip it across. Henry, he likes to shoot him. That's going to be no good. And Anderson can't get a rebound. It looked like they had position everywhere, but still didn't come away with it. Now here's White. Skip across to right. Now Henry again in the corner. Going to keep firing away. Can't hit again. There's Barnwell. Whitlow defending. Back to Henry. Now 45 seconds left in the half. Anderson with a two-point lead. Driving in into the corner for Barnwell. He'll try. That's no good. Rebound to Wagner. Slows it down. 21-19. Anderson with the ball. 35 seconds left. The Trojans have the lead. 
Connolly out of fouls to give. So if Anderson takes a hit here, they will head to the line for a one and one. Now here's Whitlow, 23 seconds left. Back for Wagner. Bryant defending him. Outside for Langley. Nate gets it back to Wagner. Now 12 seconds left on the clock. Here comes Bryant. He's, Wagner, Wagner has an avenue to pick up a, a foul here against Bryant. Crosses over. He's going to get around him. Going to take it to the hole. Takes a big hit. No whistle. Rebound Blackerby. History at the buzzer is no good. So a real struggle fest for Mike Wagner there in the first half. Couldn't get a whistle. And when he did, he picked up two early fouls. So that'll be halftime for us. My goodness. Was that a hectic half? Anderson takes a two-point lead to the break. We now have halftime. Want to thank you all for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. It's our bi-district round. In the first round of the UIL playoffs. Want to take a look at our bracket here in a moment. No word on the New Caney Jordan game. But we do have halftime. Gonna go ahead and send it to the break. But first, want to get one quick thing read out for you. Don't miss the boys UIL state championship starting Thursday, March 10th at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. That is UILTexas.org. For now, just going to go ahead and send to the break. We'll be back in a little while as we get ready to start this third quarter. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. What does the 50th anniversary of Title IX mean? It means I'm valued. I'm empowered. I can do anything. It means I'll pave the way for every girl who plays high school sports in the future. Just like every female student, coach, official, and administrator blazes the trail for me because every student deserves the opportunity to play. Encourage girls you know to participate in Texas high school sports. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com.
A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Back into it. Trojans lead it by a pair. The score is 21 to 19. Colin Page, the leading scorer for the Trojans, six points all in the second quarter. Whitlow with five, Langley with four, Francis and Blackerby both with three. The Anderson Trojans are going to need more out of their big offensive. Uh, well, the guys that carry most of the scoring load, Blackaby and Francis, have been those guys all year. But Anderson really just can't stop turning the ball over. They really struggled with the Connolly defense there in the first half. Daniel Pittsford, coach of the Trojans, usually uh, excellent in halftime adjustments. Anderson always able to get out and have a pretty good start to third quarters. Hopefully they can keep it going even with the playoff atmosphere. You know, Connolly's got a good coaching staff of their own. For the Cougars, Kendall White led the way with seven. Sam Barnwell, their leading scorer on the season, held to just two points. But they've been getting it from other guys all around the court. Just picking up points here and there. The defense has been good for Anderson. They've let uh, guys get to the basket a little bit more than they normally do, but still only to the tune of 19 first half points. And it's all about what Anderson can do in these first four minutes. I think this will decide the game. Uh, whether or not Anderson can uh, can really get moving in this third quarter. I'm not saying that Anderson will lose <laughs> if they don't go on a big run to start the quarter, but that's 
it's definitely a, a, the best opportunity that they're going to have to to get out and get a lead as the third quarter gets started. Hope you're all having a good night. Hope you're all enjoying the broadcast. Jack Farrell joining you once again. Not feeling great. All this talking uh, doesn't feel good on my throat. I slept on my back with my fan on, and I was already congested, so my throat's just been killing me all day. And working tonight certainly uh, is not helping my cause. But no matter, I'm still having fun. It will be Connolly Ball to start the half. Here's Barnwell getting ready to inbound it to number 10, Damian Henry. Henry got him up in the first half, but he was only able to hit one, so hopefully Anderson can keep him at bay. They gave him a lot of open looks. Ready? All right, we're ready. Here's Henry. Get it to Barnwell. Francis trying to come out with the steal early. Here's Bryant. Get it into the corner. They're just letting Henry shoot him. Awful start there for the Trojans. As they leave a man wide open. And a guy who clearly has a penchant to shoot. He's been getting them up all game. Now here's Wagner. Going to take it to the basket. Pulls up from the elbow. Can't connect. Here's Barnwell. Now here's Bryant to the basket, stuffs it on the other end. So right now, Connolly the one's getting out and running, and Anderson has already fallen behind to a three-point deficit. Whitlow. Now back to Whitlow. Mitchell going to put it on the floor, take it to the basket, gets hit, and no travel but no foul either. As here's Francis Anderson coming out cold to start this first half. All jitters for them. Now dumped off. Blackerby's going to get away with the steal. Two on two, but Belackerby crosses over. Going to take it right at Bryant. Takes a bump. Can't get it to go, but Bennett will head to the line for two. So Anderson going to have to take the first punch to the gut as Connolly starts out four uh, on a uh, five nothing run to start the half. Is Blackerby going to miss the first free throw? One for two for Bennett. He's got four. I feel like a lot of the mistakes in this game has been Anderson shooting themselves in the foot. And, Con and Connolly has made them pay at exactly the right times. As here's Mendez kills his dribble. They get it back outside for Bryant. Here's White. Get it over to Barnwell, now back to Bryant. Whitlow defending. And he spins away, misses the shot. As here's Francis. Bryant defending him. Now here's Jack looking for somewhere to go with it. Just has to get it to Wagner. Now here's Mike. Back for Whitlow. Two-point game. They get it into Langley deep in the post, and he gets a layup. They haven't looked for him a whole lot today, but when he does, he's been able to do that. Now Anderson ties it back up. Connolly with a two-point lead in the third quarter, but we have a tie game. Here's Barnwell. Wagner, careful not to pick up with the foul there. There's Henry. He's going to take a shot, and that's good. Henry's starting to heat up. He left him a wide-open look. And that's all he needed to get going. Now here's Francis, and they got Francis for a walk. So just right now, Anderson not playing very well. This is one of the worst basketball games that they've put together on the season. Just a two-point lead, though, for Connolly. Now here's Mendez. Barnwell with it. Wagner defending. He's going to go right at Wagner. Going to pull up. That's a bad shot. As there's Francis able to track it down. Gets it to his point guard. Up ahead for Whitlow. 
Mitchell going to put it on the floor, takes it to the cup with the bump, and one. That's going to go against Bryant, and I believe that's going to be three on him. Whitlow will head to the line for one more to try and give the Anderson Trojans the lead back once again for the first time this half. As they'll get DeAndre Toy back into the game. As Mitchell Whitlow up to seven points, another good game for him here. As his scoring output has really ticked up over the last couple weeks. Eight in the game for Mitch. 27 in the game for the Trojans, 26 for the Cougars. So Anderson has the lead back. And here comes Henry. Back for White. Francis defending Barnwell. They're looking to get it to Henry in the corner. They do. He's going to step back. Here he goes to stay hot. He does as Damian Henry uh, is unstoppable right now. He's taking some awful shots, too. He's just drilling them. Off balance, fadeaway threes. That's uh, <laughs> There's a select number of people who can do stuff like that. This here's Wagner. Henry defending. Connolly with a two-point lead, really starting to knock down a lot of their shots as Whitlow's going to take it to the paint. Back for Francis. Jack going to try a three. That's good. Jack has had a rough night of it offensively. That's just his second make, but both of them are from downtown. So six points in the game for Francis. Anderson with the lead back. Just a one-point lead halfway through the third, so Anderson not able to get their big third-quarter gut punch as we are going to have a travel against Connolly. So now, Anderson with the lead and the ball halfway through the third quarter. Back for Langley. Langley puts it on the floor, gets to the cup, takes a hit, and takes the basket. Nate Langley strong to the cup. Eight points in the game for him. He ties Whitlow. 32-29 is your score. Anderson with a little bit of a cushion here, but now the man with it is Henry, who's been knocking down everything he's taken in this half. As they're trying to get it. To number zero, White Wagner doing a good job denying it, but he has it here now. They're looking for Henry. Francis comes up to defend him. He's going to keep pulling. My goodness. You're not going to win games in the playoffs when guys just have the best game of their career. But here's a lob ahead to Langley. And Nate's going to take it to the cup. He takes a big hit. No foul. Now, now that's a foul on Francis. Yep. Not a three-pointer on the other end, though, for Henry. Trojans still have the lead. Keep it out of 10's hands. Let literally anybody touch it but 10. He's going to pull up into a shot here. At some point in this possession. Here's Barnwell. He takes it to the basket. Goes up and under with it. No good. Rebound. Knocked out of bounds. He was off Whitlow. But, but, but oh my goodness. But Toy pushed Whitlow in the back to make him lose it out of bounds. Get it quickly into Henry. Black will be doing a good job staying in front of him so he can't get a shot off. Here's Barnwell. Going to take it to the basket. They leave it white wide open. He'll try it. And he'll hit it. So Connolly uh, just making it rain from three right now. As here's Jack Francis. Going to cross over on Barnwell. Take it to the basket. Misses the layup. And he'll go to the line for two. So right now, Connolly is just incredibly hot in this third quarter as Anderson uh, can't get much on the defensive end to work. <laughs> 239 remain in the quarter. Francis to the line, just six points in the game for him so far. They'll need a big uh, final ten minutes for Jack Francis if they want to win this game. Francis with seven now. Heads to the line for one more, trying to tie it. Some lucky rolls or some uh, some good shooters touch, I should say, for Jack Francis on those two. Because now here are the Cougars. There's Damian Henry, 13 in the game for him. He's going to go right at Black. He's going to step back into a three, and that's finally a missed shot. Got a little too a little too fancy with that one. 
as here comes Mike Wagner, tie game. Mike crosses over, here's Whitlow. Whitlow gonna put it on the ground. He's gonna take it all the way to the cup. Floater is good for Mitchell Whitlow. Not a lot of guys on this team really go to a floater that often, but Mitchell Whitlow has a pretty reliable one, and it's very nice in a kind of an e intermediate spot in the lane. Because Mitchell Whitlow has been a big lift tonight as he's the first Anderson player into double figures, as there's Barnwell with it on the wing. And that's got to be an offensive foul. Bennett Blackaby had time to get set. As Anderson now with the ball back. Foul's going to go against number 20, DeAndre Toy. Because we need a towel here. Anderson with the lead back. They've got the ball as well. Just need a stop this year to, uh, to dry things up. Hopefully, Trojan's able to get out of this one with a victory. So we can bring you more Anderson basketball on Vibe. Hate to have the season end in the first round. As there's Wagner able to dish it off to Langley. Nate going to get downhill. Stops. Lays it up. Is that a travel? What? Okay. He put it. That was. That's a bad call. That's a bad call. And Nate didn't take any steps. <laughs> As here's White, officials give Connolly the ball right back. He's now there on the wing with it is Mendez. They get it back out for Barnwell. Barnwell going to try with a hand in his face. That's no good as Barnwell still can't get it going. Imagine he'll come alive in the fourth quarter. As here's Wagner, comes around the screen, takes a bump. Whitlow, as Whitlow, that was a travel. Is Anderson really struggling with the turnovers here today? As now with 115, they've still got a two-point lead. Still can't get any separation from this Connolly team. As there's Damian Henry back out to Kendall White. Barnwell puts it on the floor, kills his dribble. Now Toy going to take it at Langley. Nate facing up. That's good defense. And a rebound goes to Langley. Nate, ooh. Almost got another travel there. As here's Wagner, crosses over. Gets all the way to the cup. Wagner navigating. As that's the first make of the game for the point guard. He's got two. Here's Henry. Wagner defending, crossing over. There's White. Wagner still has yet to pick up a foul uh, since he picked up those two early ones. So he'll do a good job staying foul free for at least the first seven minutes of the quarter. As here's Henry. Going to take it in. Dump it off. A little too hot there for Mendez. Mendez loses it. That'll go out of bounds. And it went off the head of Mendez, but Francis, well, Francis, excuse me, was, was arguing that, but couldn't get the call. As here comes Page and Dale. 29.2 to go. As they'll get Wagner out along with Langley, so some defense in. Back for Barnwell. Into the corner, another open three-point shooter, but White's just going to take it to the basket. And that was a mistake as, uh, well, they get it back. As here's Henry falls to the floor. Now luckily into the hands and a missed three there, but Barnwell gets it back. 15 seconds left. Barnwell running around the pick. He's going to try three. Blocked by Blackerby. Now coming into the basket and a made shot there from Jonas Mendez as Anderson can't get a bounce tonight. As four seconds left, Francis crosses over. Going to step back. Page open for three. No good. So Anderson doesn't get their big lift in the third quarter that they are accustomed to. But they do have a lead. It's 38 to 36 as we head to the fourth quarter. Going to go ahead and take a quick 30 second break and we will be back for the final frame of action. You're listening to Anderson Basketball on Vite Live. Interested in Vite Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. 
As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Anderson will start off with the ball in the fourth quarter. Eight minutes remain. Trojans only lead it by two. So a much tougher first round test for Anderson than they might have anticipated. But now they've got to weather it. Here's Wagner. Screen comes from Langley. Nate left wide open to the cup. Gets another layup. As Bryant now down on the other end. Not sure. Didn't see what happened. Is he, he tried to jump up and block Langley's shot, I believe, and he might have just come down. That might be a non-contact situation, which uh, usually isn't good. We're going to go ahead and pan away here. But Anderson, with that, the laps defensively for the Cougars gives the Trojans a four-point lead. And Makai Bryant, probably the most athletic player uh, on this floor today, is down on the other end. Go ahead and take a quick break here uh, and come back once the injury timeout has concluded. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. And a nice ovation for Makai Bryan as he is helped to the bench by his coaching staff. It will be Cougar ball. As we are ready to get back underway, it's been a very quick game so far. Got started at 7.30, not quite 8.30, and we're already into the fourth quarter here. Now here's Henry with it outside, Page defending. He's going to get trapped in the corner. They lob it in. They find, and that's going to be a lucky break. Lawrence lost it. Uh, he had an open path to a layup, but the pass was too strong for Mendez. As we've seen that a couple times is a Connolly player not quite having the hands for, for a pass there underneath the basket, as there is right with it. Two points in the game for him. So they're trying to get it in to Toy, but that's some good defense from Dale inside. Now back out with it is Lawrence. Now here's Henry. We know how he likes to get him up. He's done a good job of it today. He has 13. Crosses over on Wagner. Floater is going to be no good. Rebound Mike. Wagner now going to push pace. Going to try and get around Henry. Crosses over. Screen comes for Langley. Wagner going to take it to the cup. Can't get the shot to go. Henry there on the board. Anderson a couple guys back to try and take it away. As Henry is the one to clear it. Now right. Ooh. Got away. Almost dragged his pivot foot there as he'll take a shot from the free throw line and knock it down. Jordan Wright, sophomore, second make of the game. He has four. So back down to a two-point lead for the Trojans. Six and a half to play. Every possession going to count. Screen from Langley. Here's Dale. Get it into Langley with a smaller player on him. Gets it to go. Nate Langley, 12 points in the game. As it's 
been a while since Nate had a big scoring outburst like that, and now he's picked a good time to do it here in the Bayou District round. Wagner takes a bump, and that's a charge. Mike Wagner was standing there waiting for Lawrence to run into him, and Jordan Lawrence picks up the charge. Second drawn charge of the game for the Trojans. Got to have your eyes up on a situation like that. 6-14 to play. That's five team fouls going against Connolly, just one against the Trojans. So Anderson with plenty of room and plenty of fouls to give. It's Langley, Page, Dale, Francis, and Wagner for Anderson as they get it into Fred up top. Jack posting up underneath, gets the man off of him, and an easy lay on the much smaller defender. Anderson starting to target some of these guys on these post-ups. Now a six-point lead for the Trojans in the, in the fourth quarter. Crossover, step back, but Jack's there to take it away. Francis into the front court, takes the bump from Henry, gets the deuce, and now Anderson all of a sudden is out to a seven, or a, excuse me, an eight-point lead, five and a half to play. There's Henry. As the Trojan faithful on its feet, into the corner. The driving in, going to pull up, no, now he's going to shoot it. That's good, a big basket for Jonas Mendez, his second of the game. Is now Connolly going to go ahead and call the timeout. So now Anderson coming back over to the bench. A big bucket there, keeps it down to a six-point game as Mendez, they've got some tough shot makers. Uh, a lot of times, the, the ones that they've shot that they've missed, I, I feel more sure about than the ones that they've shot and hit. They've got some guys hitting some crazy shots there. Mendez knocked down that, uh, excuse me, can't talk today, knocked down that shot with absolutely no rhythm. Got <laughs> pump faked it, got caught in the air a little bit, came down, put it up, and knocked it in. That's a tough way to hit a basket. Trojans will have ball back. Starters onto the floor for the team in white. 46-40, 5-19 to play. It's a whole different atmosphere in a playoff game. So here's Wagner. A whole lot of open space in that lane there as Langley takes it. Now back outside for Mike. Crossing over, into the air, off to Whitlow. Mitchell going to drive to the cup. Throws it up, and he's fouled. So this will be two shots. I think Mitchell might have tripped. Uh, was just trying to throw something up, but he does get the whistle. So he'll head to the line for two. Already uh, with ten in the game. He's right behind Francis and Langley, who both have twelve. Under five to play. Not a lot of free throws in this game, but Anderson's been doing a pretty good job hitting them. Zmitlow makes one there. Mitchell two. Two, leads back to eight. Under five minutes now. Here comes White. They've really started to go away from Henry. As here's Barnwell going to take it to the cup. And gets the acrobatic layup to go. That's just his second make of the game. Averages about 13. So Anderson now with the lead and the ball. A lot of nerves in the gym right now as there's Wagner working on Barnwell. Doesn't use the screen from Langley. Gets it over to Black. It'll be a quiet game for Bennett. This one made field goal as he's going to take it in. Got himself free. Knocks it down. Bennett Black will be in a big spot. Knocks down the mid-range jumper. He's got six in the game now. One three. One for two free throws. And then one made mid-range shot. As that's a Wagner steal. And a Black be comes to take it away as Bennett very wisely pulls back with it to give Anderson a chance to milk some clock. As, ooh, two Anderson players converge there. But it was two. Wagner is Wagner now going to milk some clock and just make Connolly do force him to do something with it. Under four to play now. As now it's uh it's time for Connolly to get some stops. 
but here's Wagner. Takes it to the basket. Hop step over to Whitlow. Mitchell had a three. Didn't take it. I think that's the right decision. He has a man closing out. Just wait until you get something great. Here's Francis around the pick. He's going to step back. Get it to Langley. Nate going to put it on the floor and has it stolen away by Toy. Not what the Trojans need there. Turnovers. As a, just try and get something at the basket. As there's Barnwell. And they're going to get Whitlow on the blocking foul. He might have tripped him. They're going to call it on the floor at least. Oh, they're going to get Wagner. All right, that's his third. I thought it was against Whitlow, if anybody. But they have been calling that on both ends at least. I think uh, on the one on Whitlow on the other end, I think Mitchell tripped and I think Barnwell tripped there too. But if they call it on both sides, then, uh, then it's a foul in this game. So they're going to get Wagner out and Page in. Francis, they're going to put him back out on number 10, Damian Henry. 13 points in the game. That's a team high. It's a game high as well. There's Barnwell looking to get it in. They do. Blackaby trying to get the steal on it. Barnwell back with it on the wing. Under three and a half to play now. It's an eight-point game. Barnwell going to go at Whitlow. Crosses over. Pulls back. Now swings it to the corner. No three there, but he'll step into a midi. That's off. Rebound batted around. Barnwell to the floor. Page, the one to come up with it, and he gets it to Francis. Jack with his head up. They've got a three on two. Jack now into the front court, and he dishes it off to Blackaby. Anderson content with just wasting some time here. Under three to play. Eight-point lead for the Trojans. Blackaby all the way to the bucket. Lays it up. Can't get it. Langley mistimed his jump, as did Page. And we're going to get a foul back on this end. Stops the break, at least. They're going to call a flagrant foul? That's just blatantly trying to get Connolly back into the game at a moment like this. That's an unbelievably important call as Paige can't believe it. And if Connolly wins this game, it, it, it's... These two free throws are going to play big as here's Kendall White. Misses the first. Connolly will get the ball back as well. He goes 0 for 2. Kendall White can't hit either technical free throw with the with the hole. Every eyeball in the gym looking at him, and the Anderson Trojans get a big heaping helping of ball don't lie. So here comes Paige, ready to, to be a menace. As, wow. Mm. You told Paige to get off of him, and that's the whole point of the press. As here's Henry, going cross court with it. Back over to Henry. Whitlow defending. Whitlow steals it away. Mitchell, lob ahead to Paige. Paige going to take it to the cup. Strong, no good. Rebound going to go. Back to Paige. It's going to go out of bounds. Colin got it back. Back to Francis. Colin Paige. And now a foul going against the Cougars. Colin Paige, winning player, making winning basketball plays. Wait, what? What's the call? It will be Anderson. Jack should have free throws. It was a little, some extracurriculars. I think Anderson believed that there was a timeout called. Okay, we do have a timeout. I'm still not sure what the call is. I was, <laughs> I was about to get mad. <laughs> so I, uh, they call the timeout. I think Francis will still get the free throws. They're still on this end with it. Things are just starting to get chippy. Colin Page was able to get that rebound. I know you don't have a good look at that corner with the parents standing. But now with 2.25 left, Anderson has it, 50-42. to 42. 
Connolly out of fouls to give. Anderson still with plenty. So now coming back, are they going to call the Francis foul on the floor? That's fine. In fact, I would almost rather Anderson not shoot free throws here and just get the ball back. With just 225 remaining, eight points is a pretty big margin. Connolly going to have to pretty much pitch a perfect game from here on out, and they are going to call the Francis uh, the foul, uh, not on Francis, but the, 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 the foul that Francis absorbed, I guess. As here's Blackaby with it, looking to get it in somewhere, just gets it to Whitlow, and Mitchell going to pull it back out. Some good play there from the Trojans just to get it in without turning it over. Under 2.20 left. Jack putting it on the floor. Gets the cross. Now Jack, he's going to get doubled. Ooh, risky pass, but Bennett able to track it down. So here's Blackaby. Henry defending, gets it back out for Langley, and Anderson not really looking at the basket right now. They're looking to milk clock and doing that uh, in spades as they've already wasted 30 seconds on this possession. And here's Blackaby. He'll have a lane all the way to the bucket. Lays it up, can't get it to go as Bennett Blackaby's rough scoring night continues. And they're going to get a foul on Wagner there. That's four on Mike with 150 to play. As Bennett just hasn't been able to get going from the field as Wagner will head to the bench along with Whitlow and they'll keep in Dale and Page back into the game. Only six points for Bennett. They did hit a big basket earlier in this fourth quarter to extend the Trojan lead. Now 1.45 to go. They get it off to White. Double coming. Looking for Henry. He's killed his dribble. Threw it off the legs of Page and that's going to be Anderson basketball! White threw it off the legs of Page but it came back and touched White again but White was standing out of bounds. So it's Anderson basketball with just over 90, well, 99 seconds left in the game. Now I assume Connolly's going to have to start fouling. But here's Whitlow, gets it into Wagner. Mike just going to take his time with it. He's got 10 seconds to get across here. Crosses over, crosses back, and he's across. Into Langley. Good game for Nate. Back for Wagner. Has you either got to start fouling if you're Connolly or as here's Francis cutting back door. Beautiful bucket, and that might be the dagger. Anderson has a 10-point lead with just 70 seconds to play. Henry's got to come alive again. As he loses it, it's a steal behind the back to Francis. Jack all the way to the cup, takes the bump. He's blocked, and Connolly gets it back, but uh, that's, that's not what Anderson's concerned in. Another steal! Wagner takes it into the front court, and that's going to be a foul. Point God to the line for a one and one. Under a minute to play, Anderson with a 10 point lead. And that's uh, <laughs> to give Anderson a 10 point lead, their largest of the half, Jack Francis. Not a flashy play, not a big step back, didn't do any dribble move. He made a, a smart backdoor cut and got a wide open layup out of it. And that is just the perfect way for an Anderson playoff dagger to go as Mike Wagner hits the first. As he took, as White went up and, and kind of hip checked him. There's now Wagner with three points. Trojans have the lead back to 11. Poised and perfect. The Anderson Trojans push it up to a 12-point lead. Not only their largest of the half, their largest of the game coming out of very important time. As here comes Henry, don't foul as he's going to get around Page. Takes it right at Langley, gets it to go. Nice finish from Damian Henry. Haven't seen a lot of his, uh, haven't seen a lot of him attacking the basket today, but he does right there, pushes it back down to a 10-point uh, lead. It's not over yet. There are still are 48 seconds, but when it's a four possession, uh, yeah, four possession game, and Anderson, honestly, I mean, does Ander Anderson doesn't even you just you just burn time. I would even take a 10 second violation instead of trying to force something because. When you only have 50 seconds, under 50 seconds left, a 10-second violation is, is valuable time. 
and you're basically having to, to anticipate that Anderson doesn't uh, miss a free throw. And here, or doesn't make a free throw, I, sh I should say. And Carnally, I think they probably should have started fouling a little bit sooner as Wagner goes behind the back to Whitlow. Going to push it ahead to Bennett Blackerby. Bennett off to Langley. Langley with the lay-in. Nate Langley puts the exclamation point on it. 14-point game for him. Here are the Cougars as Henry got away with the travel. They're going to pull up. Can't connect here. Langley on the glass. Goes high. Gets Blackerby. And Langley's fouled. He'll head to the line. Anderson has a 12-point lead with the big man headed to the line to shoot two. Excuse me, uh, to shoot a one and one. Bad foul is going to go against Barnwell. Sam Barnwell, an excellent player at this level. You hate to see a career like his end as it did. He only had four points in this game. Anderson made a very concerted effort to not let him see the ball or touch the ball. But now with 27.8, they'll get Page back in. They'll get Wagner out with those four fouls. And they'll get Colin over there to the free throw line. So as far as the officiating goes, Anderson definitely was the beneficiary of more foul calls. They have shot more free throws. But some of those calls Conley got came at very important times. So all in all, sort of balances out. But Langley, monster game. 16-point performance for the big number two fours. Here's Francis with another seal. A three-pointer is no good. Rebound Barnwell, and that's going to be a foul against Page. <laughs> uh, Colin, uh, his first instinct was to argue the call, and then he was like, you know what? Yeah, I did hit him. But now we've got some driving to do. Uh, talking to team dad extraordinaire Scott Francis. Guess who his son is? And he said, was we have a getting a timeout? What's up? What's up? What's Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Scott Francis uh, giving me some inside intel. The game uh, should be on Friday for Anderson. It should be the winner. It's Jordan New Caney. So we'll try and get a, a look at who won that. So now here's Henry trying to step back on Blackerby. As now they're just hounding him. As Anderson playing to the whistle here. As now getting free for a jumper he is good. That's Jonas Mendez. Six points in the game for him. Anderson still, though, with a 12-point lead. This game is over. It felt like a big momentum swing was when Bryant went down with injury as we have 8.3 seconds to play. So Anderson... Holding on here, 58 to 46, had to come alive in the fourth quarter. As that's when the defense really started clicking and coming together, starting to get a lot of those steals. We'll pull up the, uh, the bracket. As New Caney gets the victory. So Anderson will go on to play the New Caney Eagles. In the next round, they're saying that that game should be either uh, in Br either Brenham or Brian. New Caney, of course. Uh, I believe that's, n what, northeast? Northeast-ish of Houston? Yeah, it's, I think so. Yeah, northeast sounds right. Northeast of Houston. Um, out there on Ass 69. So, that will actually <laughs> be very much a neutral side game as both of the teams going to have to drive at least an hour and a half to get to that game. As here's a full court heave to Jack Francis, and Jack just going to pull it back. Had a chance to take it in, but he's just going to run away and run out the clock. And for the third consecutive season, the Anderson Trojans are by district champions. They pick up the victory over the Pflugerville Connolly Cougars, 58-46. to Big game from Nate Langley called upon, and he answered, but Colin Page, I cannot say enough about what he did. He got in people's heads. If you remember the interview I did with him uh, in, in, a, in the post game, that's what he said his goal was, was getting in dudes' heads. And tonight he did that. Colin Page, six points off the bench. Uh, and one of my favorite outings of the season for him. But let's go through it. Nate Langley, the big man on the boards, the big man 
inside, 16 points in the game. Jack Francis ended up tallying 14 after a slow first half. Mitchell Whitlow, a big lift for them, 12 points in the game. Blackerby and Colin Page both with six. Expect a, a bigger outing for Blackerby and four for Mike Wagner, including the game ceiling free throws. But that'll do it for us here. Anderson gets the victory 56, uh, 58 to 46, excuse me. I'd like to thank you for tuning in on the broadcast. Always a blast. As Anderson will advance to the area round for the third consecutive season. They will play the new Caney Eagles in round number two. And whoever wins that one will play the winner of Weiss, another Pflugerville school. Remember we had to broadcast at their gym a couple times and just couldn't get any connection. So hopefully uh, us play, uh, potentially playing Weiss means that I don't have to go back to that gym and broadcast where there is no signal. But once again, you can't look too far ahead as they've got a very tough opponent in the new Caney Eagles. Finished 10-4 in their district Let's go ahead and pull up their standings, get a look at them. Kingwood Park, the winner, 14-0 in that district. New Caney, 10-4. Cleveland, 9-5. Lake Creek, the team that Anderson took out in the area round last year, also uh, making the playoffs in that district. So, looking at the bracket now, unfortunately, Anderson uh, is on the same side as, the Be as Beaumont United. Uh, they won state last year, and they won it with a bunch of sophomores and juniors. So, uh, they're probably going to win it again. That's a very good basketball team, and if Anderson, uh, they would meet them in the regional semifinal. That would be the farthest that Anderson has advanced in um, what I'm going to go ahead and call the Vipe era, as in the last three seasons. Uh, they, they Anderson Trojans have lost in the regional quarterfinals. Back-to-back -back seasons, uh, after a pretty shaky first half, Anderson able to escape in comfortable fashion to a tune of a 12-point lead. Uh, once he got into the fourth quarter, Connolly never really had a chance to knock on the door. Anderson kept it at arm's length once they got out to a six- or eight-point lead and never looked back. Huge games down the stretch from Mike Wagner, always active hands. The three Trojan uh, guards, Francis Wagner and Blackaby, all with active hands tonight. Bennett couldn't find uh, his footing on the offensive end, but played a heck of a, a game defensively and for a lot of that he was guarding Damian Henry when Damian Henry was starting to go off so Bennett you know when, you, when you're tasked with so much defensively your offense is bound to slip that's what happened today so they will need a, a little bit more of an offensive performance from Bennett moving forward uh, as they advance on into the playoffs and Bennett would tell you the same thing but uh, I know he's probably beating himself up and I, I just don't think he should his, his defense in this game was uh, very important. This game could have easily gone another direction when Connolly was starting to drill all those threes with White and Henry. But all for naught, and the future is bright for the Connolly Cougars who wrap up their season 22 and 14 with the loss here tonight. Their road comes to a close, but their big players, Kendall White, will be back next season. Jonas Mendez, number three, with a few important shots, is a freshman. Right is a sophomore. Makai Bryant, who we wish all the best to him, as he went down uh, with, with a pretty bad injury and did not return. He's a freshman, and he has all the potential in the world, as you saw tonight, with the way he was flying around on the court. But the, the road ends there for Barnwell, for Toy, for Damian Henry. All guys getting on the scoring column here tonight. But that will go ahead and do it for us. We will be back. Uh, we'll get the word to you exactly when, as soon as we know, but it should be on Friday. Anderson Trojans pick up the win against the Connolly Cougars, 58-46. to Nate Langley, the big player of the game in this one. We're going to go ahead and sign off. I've been Jack Farrell. Always a pleasure bringing you some Anderson basketball on Vibe. Always a blast. And this was a fun one, especially down the stretch in that fourth quarter. So that'll do it for us. Hope you have a great night. A great rest of your weekend, or a great rest of your week, I should say, and we will see you on Friday.